the National Cleanup Production Center South Africa aims to empower industry through this instructional video series. We have looked at the cycle of the RECP assessment and implementation process in our previous two videos. Now we explore one of the most commonly used tools, the material balance. The material balance forms the heart of any assessment, starting at the pre-assessment phase and flowing into the detailed assessment. The material balance is a tool used to build a helicopter view of what is going on, a flow diagram that identifies and quantifies or input and output resource streams entering and leaving a facility or process. When fully developed, the material balance assists the user to identify and quantify economic and environmental weak points in the process, such as raw material, product losses, and hazardous waste generation. So how does a material balance work? First, let's understand why we want to do a material balance. In most instances, this is driven by some need to reduce costs, manage inventory quantities, or address quality issues such as toxic materials, legal compliance, and storage restrictions. Let's get started. As an example, we look at a simplification of a motor vehicle spray painting process. Step 1. Based on the need, define the parameters you want to better understand. For example, paint and solvent use losses and other process materials. Step 2. Determine the balance space boundary and scope. In our instance, the boundary has been set to include the preparation, spray painting and drying chamber. Step 3. Define the balance period. This is the data set period or duration, in other words, a daily, monthly or annual basis. For our case, we chose balance period over one year. Step 4. Define and record all the operating process steps within the selected balance space boundary. These include the pre-treatment, priming, painting, and drying processes using the following equipment, the steam generator, exhaust air filter, and the washing and cleaning of the spray gun and equipment. Step five, draft a detailed qualitative flow sheet of the process. Indicate the boundaries and represent the process steps with rectangles. Use arrows to show the material and energy inputs and the outputs of products, materials and waste. Step 6. Balance and quantitative inputs and outputs for the whole system and the individual steps. Step 6 provides the user with an overview summary of all the streams entering and leaving the process and their quantities. Step 7 is data interpretation. It is here that the user will review and analyze the collected and plotted data to prompt the generation of improvement options for implementation. This process calls for insight and experience and can often include brainstorming or other creative problem-solving techniques to generate more complex solution offerings. During this stage, calculations may be undertaken to determine the overall process efficiency for comparison with national or international benchmark indicators. Aspects to consider during the option generation may include housekeeping issues such as leaks, material substitution, opportunities for internal recycling, recovery of waste, and current versus dated technology. On completion of a material balance, the user will have a process map of all the input and output material flows and their quantities. This then allows the user to assess where losses and excessive flows occur and to strategize around the implementation of an appropriate intervention program. Our next video in the series looks at how organizations can improve energy performance through the development of an efficient energy management system. The National Cleaner Production Center South Africa is a program of the Department of Trade and Industry, hosted at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. 
For more information, visit www.ncpc.co.za.